Hi everybody, welcome back to a very snowy Chernerus on my uh, local PC server. And what I want to do in this video, I want to show you how you can use the very useful cfgignorelist.xml to manipulate the items on your community server for PC, PlayStation and Xbox. And really that means to stop stuff spawning in. So, one of the kind members of my Discord, and I apologies because I can't remember who suggested this, <laughs> said you should do a video about this. And I thought, you're right, I should do, because I've ignored it. So let's not ignore cfgignorelist.xml, and let's look into it. So, cfgignorelist.xml is, if you go into your, I mean, I'm using Nitrado here, but if you go into your uh, web, web interface for your server, then go into File Browser, click on that, and then go into your missions folder. So PS missions, PlayStation's XB missions for Xbox, missions for PC. And then go into the Chernerus Plus if it's a Chernerus server. Enoch if it's a Livonia server, go into there. And then CFG ignore list XML. And there it is. And you can click on it and you can you can edit it on the server. Always recommend though you download this program, this uh, file, sorry, and make a copy and edit it locally. Because it's, it is easy to make mistakes when you're editing stuff in the browser so here it is opened up in notepad plus plus which is a really good um, text editor that has some extra functions over notepad makes things nice and colorful so you can see mistakes faster so what you'll normally see is you'll see this stuff at the top and what this file does is it tell tells the server look with these items ignore what it says in types.xml and just don't spawn them in so the vanilla items that are here are things that really don't work anymore, like the engine oil, the hexco box, the Easter egg, the hoxter mask, that's the old um, payday masks, the transit bus, the wolf mask. Now, before you're thinking, oh, wait a minute, why don't I just spawn these in? Some of these don't work <laughs> either. I think engine oil does, but you can't use it on cars anymore. And the hexco box, I think, just despawns. I could be wrong. But anyway, um, so basically it says, look, don't spawn these in. And so it it doesn't spawn that doesn't spawn them in so what we can do is if we add um, entries into this we can stop stuff spawning in and delete stuff off the map so that's where it's very very powerful so the first example we would use is say say grenade chem gas like you can see here um, let's say you decided you didn't want the chem gas grenades to, to spawn in now what you could do you could go to your types the XML um, and you could find grenade chem gas. Uh, where it is? There we go. And you could, you know, you know, you could delete this from here. So you know, so it didn't spawn in. Um, and then you know, stuff would despawn it, and it wouldn't spawn in. However, that that's not a very sophisticated way of doing it because with some of these things, you may well want them to start spawning in again. And it's easier just to go into your CFG ignore list and do stuff. And what you'll notice here as well is I have put some. Um, building types as well now this is very powerful because it means you could do specific wipes of specific things on a server without having to do a reinstall or a whole server wipe or a soft server wipe so let's start off with the grenade cam gas so let's go over to my server so here I am um, now although this is a local PC server this works similarly for um, console servers as well just remember that the admin tools that I'm using here we don't have access to on uh, on console but they allow me to, to look at things so if we look in the xml editor here we can search for grenade chem gas and we can see there's 12 of them at the moment on this server so I can say, actually well I, I don't want that. i don't want the chem gas grenade so um, there's my cfg ignore so i'm just going to take away these remarks around it so that it actually works and you'll see the format is similar to the format um, that you get in your types.xml. You've just got to be careful that it's type name equals and then the class name, and then you have the finishing type bit. You see there? So if you're copying and, copying and pasting them from your types, um, make sure you, you have the end bit on as well, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so in my CFG ignore now, I can now save that. Now, because this is on my local server, it actually sits on my PC and runs on my PC rather than a Nitrado box somewhere in a in a data warehouse so that's that's updated that file for me straight away what you would have to do is uh, save any changes you made here or you would upload 
um, a new file over the top of existing one. But either way, we need to restart the server. So let me exit out of here. So let's exit there. And when you've got a local server, it's really easy to start and restart the server. You just kind of press spacebar, press spacebar again. So I've restarted the server. Obviously, on Nitrado, you click restart up here. So we'll give it a few seconds and then we'll click and we'll log in again. This is a good example of why if you can install and run a local server, they're very, very powerful because you can test things very, very quickly. Um, trying to test things on a remote server is a lot slower and can be very frustrating if you make mistakes. So the server's firing up and that CFG ignore list will have said to the, the server, said to the central uh, loot economy, look, don't spawn the cane grass grenades in because um, we don't want them. Right, here we go. So we can load in. Here we are. Right, so now I'm just going to put God on to my character so if some walls turn up I don't get killed. Let's fire up uh, VPP admin. And so let's look for that chem gas grenade so grenade chem gas get item stats as you can see there's now none on the server they've disappeared um one thing that could happen that you might think you could do is you could say well i'll tell you what why don't i just turn something that i don't want any more off why don't i just turn the nominal to zero and the minimum to zero and that would stop those items spawn in but it wouldn't make them disappear from the server that's the difference of this if something doesn't have a type entry so if you delete the type entry or you add it to the CFG ignore list, um, it won't spawn in. So, so that's quite cool, isn't it? So that, that's a useful use for it. But the next one we'll do is let's get rid of this base here. So let's say you wanted to do a wipe where you got rid of people's bases. So this is a watchtower, isn't it? One thing you might not realize is that if you go into your types.xml and you do a search for watchtower as an example, what you'll notice is, the, so the thing that we craft in the game is the watchtower kit, isn't it? You get some sticks and you get some rope and you can create a watchtower kit, which you then place and then you add all your resources, your wood and your nails and all that sort of stuff. And then you get your hammer out and you can build a watchtower. But the watchtower itself does have a, um, does have a types entry. Um, now this doesn't mean you can start spawning in <laughs> watchtowers around the map because it is as you can see it's a crafted item it only only comes up that way in fact well i've never tried to maybe you can but for the sake of this video don't all right but because it has an entry what that means is we could add it to the cfg ignore list and what you'll see here is i've remarked these out with the left um arrow bracket exc exclamation mark dash dash and then after it dash dash right um arrow bracket um, so that they t they appear in green, which means that the the server ignores these entries. But what I could do is, if I take that, cut that out of there, and let's put it um, there. You see it's in colour now, so it means the server will read it, and we save that. What should happen now is, when we restart the server, the watchtower kit will be prevented, the watchtower will be prevented from spawning in. So let's go over to here, and let's exit out of here there he goes and then let's restart our local server and then restart it obviously what you would be doing is you would be hitting the restart option on your remote server and then let's hit play here to spawn in and with a bit of luck that will have um, prevented the watchtower from spawning in and we would have got rid of that um, now you can do this with anything so you could have situations where, let's say you've made a coding error on your server. Um, I made a terrible coding error once where on, the fl on a particular type of flag, like a Chernerus flag or something, or a Livonia flag, that would, you know, the ones that spawn in normally in the shops and they, that you can put on a flagpole. What I did was I didn't put any restrictions on how they were counted in the server. So normally in a types.xml, there we go, see, it's gone. So we, we've, we've wiped that off, so that's that's uh, pretty cool. Um, so let, let me show you actually what I'm talking about. So what I've done is in types, any item in the flags, 
it tells the game how to count them. So, for example, with the vitamin bottle, it tells the game to count them on the map, but not when they're in a player, not when they've been made, not when they're in a box, not when they're in cargo, that sort of stuff. And with the, these certain flags, it was two of the flags, all of these were set to zero. So what that meant was the game just kept spawning them in, spawning and spawning and spawning and spawning and spawning them in. So every time, well, all the time, as soon as there was a space, another one of these flags would appear. And so someone said to me on the Discord, said, Rob, there's flags everywhere. What's going on? And I thought, ooh, checked. There was flags everywhere. So I went in, saw that the code was wrong, the fact that I had zeros for everything. And then what I did, because I didn't think of using the CFG ignore list because this was a while ago, I just said, okay, so I, I corrected it. And I said, don't panic, everybody. They will start to disappear in good order. Just kind of ignore them. Uh, for now but what I could have done was I could have gone into the CFG ignore list added those two class names to the CFG ignore list just restarted the server all those um, extra flags would have been deleted and would have disappeared um, I could have then made sure that the types entry was correct and then remove that item or uh, remarked it out in the CFG ignore list just in case, and then restarted the server, and those they, the items would have start sp started spawning in naturally again. So it's a great tool for correcting mistakes. You could use this to do a vehicle wipe, for example, as well of a specific vehicle, um, which would be so. For example, in one of my um, my boosted loot files, we have a I call it the trader truck. It's just a truck full of guns, and there's a party truck, which is a truck full of uh, fireworks stuff like that you could you, you could just delete that one item and then it would spawn in again back back where it started so that could be useful so it's useful for all sorts of things it's triggered by a server restart so you're gonna have to make sure you tell the people on your server that you're doing restarts when you do this but obviously be careful as well you know with, with great power comes great responsibility and all that sort of stuff um and when you do add stuff to the uh, CFG ignore list make sure when you're done make sure you take it out so the stuff starts spawning in again so there we go, CFG ignore list XML. Not ignored anymore. Hopefully that kind of explains things. If you've got any other great ideas about how you use or maybe how you do use the CFG ignore list XML on your community server for PC Place and our Xbox, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you've found this useful, obviously hit like. And if you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon.